This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Uh, no wait, take over power to... Shit, what the heck is wrong with this car? Take over now, power to... Look at this, look at this. Huh? What the heck, man? Yo, what's up? We are now at Alderbu and yes, finally we have it here. Neo ET7. This car has a drag coefficient of 0.208, I think it was. It's super slick. It has 100 kilowatt hour battery. It can charge at whooping 140 kilowatt. It has manual battery heating or automatic battery heating. And we're gonna do 1000 kilometer challenge. So yes, look at this thing, huh? It's over five meters long. It has over three meter wheelbase. And it's a premium luxury Chinese car. Huh? Do you like this shit? Huh? Do you like this shit? Look at it, we have a little tiny screen in the back here also. Yeah, nice. Uh, wait, is this the one where you cannot fold the seats? Shit. Oh, okay, at least it's daddy friendly. Okay, okay, anyway, let me show you inside the car. But listen to the door closing sound. What the heck, man? Uh, I mean, okay, it's a Chinese car, but it sounds so cheap. The f the heck? Oh, 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 I forgot. Uh, the stolen bag bottle is here. Uh, okay, let's try again. That's better. Oh, yeah. Okay, listen. If I'm gonna activate the uh, auto steer, uh, you know, uh, Neo Pilot, press this button here. Highlight is on. Oh. Uh. Highlight is on. Highlight is on. The fox, man? I don't want some kid to talk to me. Highlight is on. Hey, listen, kid. Can we turn you off? Highlight is on. And then we need to change lane. Please control the steering. Uh, yes, kid, I'm controlling the control. You might want to hold the steering wheel. Otherwise, pilot will be deactivated. Or else, I'm gonna tell mommy. <laughs> go, go tell mommy that I didn't hold the steering wheel. <laughs> okay, there's another thing I noticed. Uh, this one, uh, I mean, it's an, it's an Asian car. So I'm gonna show you here. I think this was also the case for the new ES8. Look at the power meter. 17, we, we are on flat surface, fairly flat. 8 kilowatt, 17 kilowatt, back to 9 kilowatt, 18 kilowatt. It has this yo-yo like, driving style. If you've ever been in Asia taking a taxi or some shit, you will notice that Asian drivers, they drive like this. They, 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 trot, they, they push the throttle a little bit and then they left off, let off. And then they push some more throttle and then they let off. And the, this car is driving just like an Asian driver. Look at that. We just passed um, Göteborg and we are heading towards Kungsbacka and then suddenly some error appeared. Powertrain error or something. Uh, uh, autopilot disengaged. Uh, the hazard light came on and then when it took over I can apparently drive. Yeah. But when I try to enable uh, uh, Neopilot again it says Unable to activate powertrain error. 
Miss... Wait, what? How? What? Wait, wait, what the heck is wrong here? I have a powertrain error that I can't activate all the pilot, but it's still driving. Uh, what the heck is wrong? Why do I keep getting buggy press cars? What, what, what's wrong? Do I see any errors here? There is some alert there. Wait, 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 let's see. Notification here. No, no, huh? What, 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 what the heck? I, I have enough juice. I have 45 uh, kilometers of range left. I need to charge up though. Turn off AC for longer range. Okay, well, that's fine. It, hey, pi ex pilot enabled. <laughs> okay, we're good. I guess we're good. Yeah. Uh, no, wait, take over power to. Shit, what the heck is wrong with this car? Take over now, power to. Look at this, look at this. Huh? What the heck, man? Uh. Well, the car honks at me. Freaking Chinese car, wait, which car did that? MG Sata CV also did that shit, man. What's wrong with Chinese cars? But okay, anyway, um, we are now at Kungsbaka. Everything is closed. Sugar K is closed. McDonald's is closed. Chop Chop is closed. At least we have recharge uh, chargers over there. But I chose to use Sugar K because, you know, Sugar K, they have, uh, they have now fixed this so that we have one app before it was one Swedish Circle K app and the and Norwegian Circle K app. They have fixed it and uh, I can use it via the app or even the RFID I have associated with my account works. So now we are charging, getting 105. Oh, it started at uh, 99 kilowatt. It's slowly ramping up now. Ooh, we are back in the game. Except for that there is this so-called powertrain error or whatever it is. Um, so I suspect that maybe the lidar is kaput or something because i could drive even though the cars claim powertrain error uh, but i could not activate adaptive cruise control or auto steer yeah but if i can keep driving i could just finish this limp I mean, we just have to well not limp but we just have to finish this kind of clumsy yeah because i don't want to redo this you know or do we bail out? And then uh, I'm not sure what the heck we're supposed to do. <laughs> but we are taking 107 kilowatt right now. Uh, because I just realized that, you know, at Varberg, further down the road, there is a swap station. But I'm not sure if it's open. But the problem is that it's almost three at night. And the swap station, I think, closes at, uh, at nine or something, nine or ten. So ideally, I need to also visit that swap station. Shit, do I have to redo? Alright, we're back on the road now. So I'm going to check if we can uh, enable uh, the cruise control thing. Wait, pilot enable? What? Wait, wait a minute. Uh, are, are we good? Uh, seems like it's working again. But except for that, I, I don't know if it will fail again. But it seems to be working. It was just a glitch. The only problem is that we are heading back north. I'm bailing out. I'm going back home. Uh, for several reasons. First of all, if there is a powertrain error, I consider it to be quite severe. Okay, in this case, I, it didn't leave me stranded. But still, you know, uh, when I was charging, I wasn't sure if... I would get the same problem again and then it turns out that it was just a hiccup okay fine but it messed up my timing uh for 1000 kilometer challenge uh and I, I also don't know if it will occur again later today and also if <laughs> if nia knows about i mean if nia hears about this problem they actually might not want me to keep driving but it's night now you know but so 
you know, what would Neo suggest if I was doing in the daytime and I'd call them? They would probably say, uh, please return home and we can probably buy your new car, maybe. Yeah. Man, um, I got to tell you what happened last night. Um, I came to speculate, 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 speculate. It was still dark. I, I was tired. I was dead tired. So I went to one of the I only did. I don't remember which one. I was struggling a little bit with handshake, and then I plugged in, and then I set the clock, and then I slept for an hour until the car was at 100%. And I was like, oh, she. And then I moved over here, you see? Yeah, I, then I moved the car. And then I set the, I slept, I, I, I think I slept for several, I think I actually napped for like three hours or something. Yeah, I, I'm not sure because the last alarm was set to six. Uh, I was, oh. At least one thing is for sure is that these seats are super comfy. When you roll out the storm bag um, pillow here, like this, uh, and then the heater is on, and you just sleep like this, kind of, with uh, the storm bag jacket on like this, and if you are exhausted, you can sleep like this for hours. Well, yeah, man. I, I had to get back home. I had to go to the toilet first. Oh, wait, wait, what? How many percent do we have now? Okay, so the car pulls four amp. Well, it doesn't say how many kilowatt. This is kind of funny. When, when we are driving, then the kilowatt here displays. But when it's stationary, it doesn't display kilowatt. But at least it displays volts and amps. And you can see that we're pulling 1.6 kilowatt. Uh, and then if it was, we had 100% when I pulled over here and just camp. Oh, we used 7%. Okay, whatever. Let's, let's whatever. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, we're on the move now. So we see we have header display here. And we also have the speed. But look, okay. So I'm cruising at uh, roughly 118 kilometers per hour. And I gotta say, this car is really nice and quiet. The ride is also good. It's like the, the ride quality, softness. It doesn't do any weird Chinese bounds like many Chinese EVs tend to do. Uh, but it is so nice and quiet. I need to do a, a noise test also of this car, but overall, like the interior, everything here feels nice. It feels, oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it feel, this car feel, feels well built. I feel like it, it is better than the ES8 in many ways. Yeah, super nice and comfy. So, oh, at least that part is good. Like the whole car, the, the technical part of the car, the speed, the smoothness, everything, you know, the, the, uh, the ride and the, the feeling on stuff, like even the door closing sound without the bottle is really good. It's just that uh, I get the impression that the car has been ruined by uh, poor implementation of software. Right, we are now at uh, Vestby power swap station. We're gonna do a test. I need to get used to this. I have done it already with the ES8, but we're gonna have to do it with the ET7 also. Okay, so everything, yeah, it's now, to, yeah. So it tells me that I have to go over there and then press start and then we're good to go. That, that's the dude, by the way. There's always a dude at the power swap station that needs to do something. Uh, and that's why they have opening hours here. But in China, supposedly, they're open 24 seven. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, uh, it's your turn. Go go to start area and tap button below, all right? 
go to start area uh, start please park your vehicle manually into the start area of power swap and then press the brake pedal okay please press the brake pedal oops okay nicely done now you can tap to start parking into the power swap state please press the brake pedal nicely done now you can tap to start parking into the power swap station. Release brake. We are parking now. Be aware of your surroundings. Do not open any door or take over the steering wheel. You can press the brake panel to control the speed. A freaking kid is driving for me now. Shit. Oh, shit, that was hard. Damn, spilled my coffee there. Okay, 140 kilometers left. Start power. Wait, we call okay, blah 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 blah. Start power. Swap. Let's go. This may take some time. Please wait. Yes, kid. Let off the steering wheel. Wait for okay. Oh, cool. going on Is it this Neo is in zombie mode. I need no me, I mean, no me is in zombie mode. Okay, okay. Mirror.
Oh yeah! Up and running. Wait. Okay. Green. Green means go. <coughs> oh, there was there was one car waiting. Oh. All right. So uh, um, people in the live stream said that that took six minutes. I actually recorded the whole session, so you guys get an impression of how long it takes. So yeah, you see now the next car was actually waiting in line. So um, if several cars are waiting, then it might take a while before. I mean, the, the swap itself goes quick, six minutes ish, right? But uh, you can't just like unlike those uh, charging stations over there, the, the camp power or or even bigger sites. Then you usually just go to the whatever available slot and you plug it in. But it will of course take longer. So. Is this concept gonna work? I'm not sure. At least if Neo, they could deploy more stations. If they have, let's say, a dual penetration slot. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's say, I don't know if it's possible. Maybe it's not. Uh, yeah. But okay, let's go home then. Oh yeah, and you see here, we always get 90% battery. They don't charge the batteries to 100% because it's going to degrade the battery more. So 90% 90, 90 is good enough. Oh, we are finally back in Oslo. It's Sunday morning, so it's fairly quiet here at Alnabru. Not too much traffic, but okay. So there you guys have it, the Neo ET7. And then we have a Tesla Model S Plaid from Marcus Beal in the garage still. So yes, actually, um, yeah, let me, let me get inside the car and I will explain now what's going on. Yeah, so what went wrong? Why did I come back here? Why did I bail out? Well, I blame 90% myself because what the biggest problem was that I did not plan for swap. But okay, we can say that yes, but the problem was also that Neo didn't open the swap station 24-7. If it was open 24-7, I could actually have finished. I could have proceeded. But uh, although another problem is that I was dead tired. I did not plan this. Uh, I had other stuff I had to do and it didn't get enough sleep. So I felt like I wanted to bail out also. But I guess if I had to do it, I can just pop an energy drink and finish I guess but also the last problem was that powertrain error it scared the shit out of me but when I called Neo today he they answered on a Sunday actually they want to talk, talk to me um, he, he he was talking as if he had heard about this issue before and then they didn't want the car back or something like that they were like okay whatever it's a glitch I said yeah it's a glitch okay um, that's it. So <laughs> yeah, if you guys get a powertrain error in your Neo, then you don't have to worry. It's fine. It's fine. No problem. Now, but I'm going to retest the 1000 km challenge with battery swap this time. And I have to do a different time schedule, uh, not the usual night run. And we can incorporate some battery swap. I will explain more in detail in other videos. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fair and square. We're using one of the car's mechanics, which is the battery swap, which is a very great advantage. So yeah, but I will come more in detail in the actual uh, 1000 km challenge retest. But I should s tell you guys that this car, okay, the software is kind of shitty in many ways. Like it, it annoys me with the sound, bing, bing, no me, you know. Uh, and the whole auto steer and the jittering and the uh, uh, yeah but i have to say the car is really nice done like the interior the finish the the door closing sound uh the ride the soundproofing i get super impressed like i'm feeling like i'm driving a, a german premium auto um but then it's kind of ruined by the software so if if neo can just nail down the software this car could be a real competitor against German premium autos like Mercedes, BMW, Audi even, and of course Tesla. So yeah, and, and it's, it's for a good reason that this car rides so well and it feels so great because the design studio in Neo, for, for Neo is located in München. We have German who made this car, who designed the car. 
But then I feel like the software has too much influence from the Chinese people with the ding dong and the whole Asian, Asian type of driving style and the whole, yeah. So they just have to fix this, nail on the software, and then this car is gonna kick ass for the Lord or the emperor of China. I don't know, whatever. Okay, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.